this lecture is about the vertebral artery as a gateway to the great vessels and other abnormalities in the neck. The outline of my talk is to first discuss anatomy and variations of the vertebral artery, the kinds of waveforms one may see, subclavian steel, both complete and partial, and then a discussion of brachiocephalic disease. I have no personal disclosures. We will be using this construct of the aortic arch and great vessels to discuss these findings. The vertebral artery is typically the first branch of the subclavian artery, though in a small percentage, it may arise directly from the aortic arch. It extends from its origin into the transverse foramen of C6 and then passing to exit C1 at the foramen magnum. These are the different segments of the vertebral artery. It gives rise to the posterior inferior cerebellar artery and then joins with the contralateral vertebral artery forming the basilar. A variety of variations exist and these do affect the waveforms of the vertebral artery. As part of a carotid examination, we typically take a brief image in color and then a representative spectral Doppler of the vertebral artery. Infrequently, we are asked to specifically image the vertebral artery along its course. So we look between the vertebral foramina on a carotid study. Um, the vertebral arteries are often slightly asymmetric in size as compared to the carotids, which are more equivalent. It's usually not a problem to find them unless there's some bony abnormality or major shadowing. The waveforms from a normal vertebral artery are low resistance monophasic, similar to an internal carotid artery, as you can see here. The average peak systolic velocity is approximately 56, though there is a range depending on dominance of a vertebral artery. These are color Doppler images of the extravertebral segment and the intravertebral segment with the shadows from the vertebral bodies. Sometimes there is intrinsic disease of the vertebral artery, and we'll discuss that first. The vertebral arteries and the basilar can be responsible for ischemic strokes in a percentage of cases. These often have a higher mortality and morbidity associated than associated with carotid disease. Treatment has typically been medical over the years, though more recently there are surgical and endovascular strategies, and these make us more, uh, what we say about the vertebral arteries often make more of a 